as we start our year, we want to get some momentum that can help our students in class be able to have fun and interact and feel comfortable speaking to each other and talking in that environment. Sometimes we look for variety and we look for a bunch of things we can do online. We gotta be careful that sometimes our focus on being different or having those different variety tools can make us forget that we, they, we have an objective that we're trying to accomplish every day. Our purpose is to help youth and young adults deepen their conversion to Jesus Christ and his restored gospel, qualify for the blessings of the temple, and prepare themselves, their families, and others for eternal, uh, for eternal life with their family and father. So as we keep the objective of Seminary Institute in mind, it really does help us to remind ourselves and our students the simple objective of class isn't to come and sit down and go through the scripture blog. It's not to get 75% attendance and graduate. It is to deepen our conversion to Jesus Christ and his restored gospel. One of the things we want to do in the summertime as we're getting ready before school starts or even throughout the year is check out seminary.churchofjesuschrist.org. You can find this link also by going to churchofjesuschrist.org, click on serve, and then in the serve area, you select seminary for your calling. But seminary.churchofjesuschrist.org takes us directly to it where it gives us a bunch of tools, resources, videos, trainings, all kind of things that would help you in your calling as a seminary teacher. But we mentioned earlier studying, uh, teaching in the Savior's way is one of the resources. So this is a teacher's manual that every auxiliary organization in the church uses uh, to help improve the quality of teaching in our classrooms. We invite you to individually go into it, look at it, and see how you might be able to apply certain things. and ways that you can improve your your skill set. Um, we'd also invite you to meet with your ward and stake leaders. This might be to arrange which classroom you're using. This might be to work with students that you want to make sure they get registered. Which children can you reach out to that maybe are not active? Which ones should you not reach out to because they've asked not to be contacted? Um, typically, we have a similar devotional or an open house where p parents and, and students have a chance to meet with a teacher to learn some of the basic information, such as the start and end time, um, what happens if there's a hurricane, you know, if school closes or school you know, cancels a class, then we automatically uh, cancel seminary. Now, so we can just go through some of the regular things. This is a great time to introduce the, the, the importance of being on time and that flagrant tardies could possibly cause a student to not get credit. Um, and this is an area just to also maybe possibly teach a small scripture block so that the students can feel what it would feel like to come to class, especially for a student that might not be sure they're, they want to attend. You would want to decorate your room or make it where the students feel like it's their space. Um, well, it might be a Relief Society room or a primary room or young women's room on Sunday. It's also a seminary classroom Monday through Friday. So that's where you want to meet with the bishop and, and have him coordinate with the other leaders well, making sure that there's no um, disgruntled feelings about the use of the room and how y'all can share the property together. And we also want to reach out to every student, identify every student who's going to be attending your class or potentially could be attending your class, and make sure they receive a personal invitation to attend seminary, knowing the start time and the start date. When trying to work with the class, we really are trying to create a Zion-like environment. To do so, we've got to be one heart, one mind. We all have to dwell in righteousness, and there's no poor among them. There's no students being left out. So the objective with these first 10 days is really to create an introduction to material, but also a bonding of a class to interact in a way that breaks down silence and makes them comfortable talking so you can have a discussion experience as you search the scriptures together. And so as I try to do that, I would in my mind think, how do I create an environment that is one heart and one mind, that, that they dwell righteously together and that no one's left out. As we prepare, this would be for you yourself to be ready. And so call and text your students to let them know that class is going to be tomorrow. You're excited to see them. Many of, many teachers use a Remind app, and in in, it's often used in the public school system. It's a free app. And it lets you message the group in general, and they get just simply a text message. Then if they were to reply to that, it doesn't reply to everybody. So I use that with the Institute, and you might find that to be an effective tool. It's Remind, R-E-M-I-N-D. 
But if you are going to text a student, would you please maybe text mom or dad with that? So you're not just texting a student indirectly, you know, directly one-on-one. -on -one. Prepare your lesson. Make sure your first lesson is the best lesson ever. And that is really important because you might have been begging John to come to seminary and say, hey, just come one day. So you want to make sure this is a really good lesson. This is not going to be a lesson when they come in and just let, let's talk about what the Book of Mormon looks like or how we can use the scriptures in our life. This has got to be a full interactive experience. Get to bed. Make sure you get to bed early. You're not going to sleep well, just like your students aren't. They're excited for the first day of school. There's maybe a fear of oversleeping, set 20 alarm clocks, whatever you need to do. But make sure you get some rest. So day one's here, your first day of seminary. Maybe you just got called the day before and you're just anxious what we're going to do. So I'm going to make sure I'm at class early. I want to be there first. I want to be there before students. I do not want to be unlocking the building to walk into the classroom with students behind me in tow. I want to make sure I'm there. I open the door, turn lights on, go in the classroom, set the, make sure the tables are set right, make sure chairs are set appropriately, have things on the board I want to use. I want the environment nice and ready. So when students get there, I can stand there and shake their hand or give them a fist bump and welcome them to class. Tell them how nice maybe that outfit is for the day or you like those new shoes or that's a cool book bag. You want to interact with them as they come in the door with a big, big smile. And then you also want to make sure that we have just a basic devotional. This is going to be something you pre-organized. This is a person who can welcome them to the seminary that day. Uh, that might be you for the first day. Uh, then you're going to have an opening hymn. And that will be used with the Tabernacle Choir with music, with, with audio um, and singers. And then also you're going to have just a spiritual thought, someone who can, their favorite scripture and why they like it or something they learned at FSY or at youth conference or whatever, followed by an opening prayer. Nothing difficult, um, very brief in that sense, but pre-organized where you've invited everyone to do uh, the role of that devotional. And then you're going to go into your lesson that's going to have your favorite scripture block of the Book of Mormon for this year that you can then turn around and help them to have the spirit. There's some neat object lesson that can go with it, possibly some great questions, changing gears every couple of minutes um, and having a wonderful experience. The reason I personally want you to just choose some scripture you like, um, particularly this year in the Book of Mormon, is so that you can have that passion that goes along with that doctrinal principle. And maybe yours favorite was um, the Tree of Life. Maybe it was King Benjamin's address. Um, maybe it was as something with Alma with uh, 32 or something to that degree. It might be ahead. It could be Moroni. It may be the Savior coming at 3rd Nephi 11. The, the idea being that you love it because you love that they're going to feel your love for the scriptures and your love for the Savior. And they're going to feel that deepening experience for their conversion. Um, you're going to bear testimony at the last few minutes, which is just a brief I know of what you've talked about that day in class. This is a bear witness of whatever principle you were teaching that day. Closing prayer, and then get them out. This cannot be late, so it's a 50 minute class. So at 45 minutes into the class, I'm bearing testimony and wrapping up and getting them out the door. I wanna be over that direction so when they leave, I can shake hands or fist bump with them, compliment them for something they've said, tell them good luck for the day, but make some inner positive interaction with that big smile as they head out the door. You did it. Day one's over, and day two starts right as soon as they leave that classroom. And so at this point, we're going to go through the normal program. We're going to be there early, lights on, air conditioner working, chairs, tables set up, things on the board we want. I've got a big smile. I'm shaking their hands or fist bumping them, asking them questions about their first day. Uh, we're going to have a pre-organized devotional from the day before with some a student to welcome, a song that they picked out, a person to give a scripture and why they like it, and a prayer. Uh, very basic still, but it was pre-organized on day one. When they... Then I'm going to ask them to, to do an introduction. So everyone talks. Uh, if you've got a big class, you got to make sure this moves quickly. If you've got a small class, this won't take nearly as long, but you want to share their favorite whatever. Favorite ice cream, favorite ride at Disney, favorite beach, favorite um, temple, favorite whatever. The idea here is, again, to break down uh, the silence and get them comfortable talking in class. 
Well, so just something fun. Their favorite scripture is going to be, hey, what's your your favorite scripture anywhere? I don't care where it's at. It doesn't have to be Book of Mormon. It could be any scripture, wherever it's at, and just share with us why it's your favorite. Again, the objective here is they are sharing something maybe temporal for the first favorite. Um, the second is you're going to introduce something spiritual that they can share something personal that's relevant to them, that means something to them in that environment, and they find that they're safe doing that. And then we'll do a, an, an activity that is their favorite Book of Mormon scripture and why from up to now, or you could do the whole thing, but um, this is going to be more focused on maybe their favorite Book of Mormon scripture from first semester, other Book of Mormon from first Nephi through, you know, Mosiah that they experienced already, um, and again, a why experience. And this is going to kick into um, the introduction to Book of Mormon lesson. But the lesson is going to be, if you go into your um, gospel library in a seminary, in the manuals, into your seminary manual, you'll find the um, very beginning of the year, back in January, we had a review introduction to Book of Mormon material. Inside this is going to be lessons on the title page and testimony of the Book of Mormon. So the objective of this lesson is to go back and remind them of the objective of the Book of Mormon by reviewing the title page, and also the testimony of the Prophet Joseph and witnesses of the Book of Mormon. Uh, the reason is you have freshmen that have now entered the class that have not had the experience the first semester. And it's good just to review as we've had a summer break and now kind of getting our brain back on what we're doing with the Book of Mormon and the importance of it in their life. Bear testimony, closing prayer, shake hands, out the door. Come back day three, lights on, get there before the kids, big smile, shake their hands, devotionally pre-organized just like before but now we're going to do another activity it's going to be more of a student introduction um this is fun where you could just take half the classes student ids or half the classes keychains um put them in a bucket or a shoe or whatever of the half the class and have the other half draw out what that is and with the person they draw out they interview um have a, a set of questions you want to know about what's her birthday what's her favorite candy or their favorite treat, um, or were they born? You can go online and find a bunch of introduction questions that you can do with that. That would be, that would be fun. But this would be an activity on another student learning who they are, and then they introduce them to the class. It's really great because it breaks down even friendship barriers. So you can interview somebody you don't know possibly, or get to know somebody different. It's really cool when a senior is interviewing a freshman. Or, um, but this is again to break down that class is not just robotic. Come sit down and I talk to you about the scriptures. When that's done, we'd have a lesson going back to that uh, beginning manual uh, chapters of the Book of Mormon intro materials. This is different. This is going to have a section in the five days on studying the scriptures. So this lesson is is studying the importance of the scriptures, why we read them, the importance of reading every day. The need to uh, imply these into our lives, the power scriptures bring into our life. We bear testimony of that at the end. Uh, we have a closing prayer, shake hands, and then out the door. Day four, we start the same way. First, get there, lights on, air conditioner going, chairs set up, big smile, shake their hand, ask questions, interact with them in a positive format. Um, regular pre prearranged devotional before. And this one, we're going to go back into the Book of Mormon intro materials that you had before, back to the beginning of the year. And there's a lesson inside there called, that focuses on the role of the learner. This lesson focuses on helping the student know their role in taking ownership to the, the class experience. That we want them to recognize that we can be here to have a class discussion, but they have to own their, their experience as the learner itself. Um, afterwards, an activity to do once that's done, making sure you balance your time well enough, what would you like to know better? They could turn those into you. You could then um, put those on the on the board or on the wall. Uh, you might want to put them on, a, you know, print them on different paper so that no one knows who someone's handwriting if you want. But um, what do you want to know better? And then you could also have those up throughout the year. Hopefully we might see those as a theme going through. Maybe they want to understand better about a certain aspect of the Savior? And do we see this answer develop in our class? So it goes back to the role of the learner. What, they, what, what are they going to do to get a better understanding? Going to bear testimony of the fact that we learn 
and that the Lord wants us to learn and we have a responsibility to act to learn. And then closing prayer, shake hands, kick them out. It's likely as a Friday. Um, just want you to know that whether it be a Thursday or Friday, whichever day your last day of seminary is, please don't do games this day. This is the day we want to arm them with power. They're about to go into a social world on a Friday night or a Saturday, Saturday evening that might cause some challenges with, with keeping their covenants. And we don't want to send them off on their spiritual um, battle with uh, donuts and a game day. Same way of starting that we've done all, all week so far, but I love the game Liar Liar. You can replace this with any other game. But this is fun because it's two truths and one lie. And the class has to stump the, and figure out what the lie is. It's fun because they tell stories with it. They can talk about it. They, you want them to talk about it. The whole idea is to get them talking so that they again feel that this is an environment that I can be myself and talk and it's okay to laugh and be a little more vulnerable. If you don't like this game, change that with something else. But this is really cool because you could also say to them, half of you in here might be family or tied in with cousins or you know each other, but with best friends, your job is to stump them. After that, we're going to do an activity lessons of the plan of salvation. So when we get a student ask a question, we want to train them as a learner that every question could be answered in the plan of salvation. And we just got to find what area of the plan that that question could be drawn towards to understand better. And so we want to maybe have sidewalk chalk to go outside and the parking lot, they can draw their plan the best they want. Uh, you want to outline the plan first beforehand. Remember the circle line, circle line layout of the plan is really just kind of a primary idea to give them the basic fundamentals of it, but that we better understand that Christ is the center of the plan and everything else revolves around that. And so get, ask them to be creative. Ask them to find a way to outline that. And again, you outline it beforehand for any students that maybe don't aren't aware of the plan or don't understand it as well. Uh, but then go outside or have some activity in your class or something that does, goes along with the plan of salvation. I bear testimony of these things, closing prayer, get them out the door. So when we get there on, on Monday or day six coming in, we're going to have that same startup. Um, but this time we're going to introduce before devotional, we're going to introduce them doctoral mastery. We're going to explain to them that the first presidency and core 12 apostles have selected 24 scriptures of each course of study that they believe are most relevant to the lives of the youth of that day. They're not the same doctoral mastery that they that their mom or dad had with scripture mastery or that you possibly had before. These have adjusted because the first presidency and 12 have selected the most valuable, most relevant for their day. Um, and, and then they're also we want to introduce to them the 100. So they're not 100 anymore. We call them 100 because it used to be 25 for each one. But you're going to take each of the 24 of the four courses of study and you're going to identify the fact that any question they have in their life, any dilemma they experience in their world, that there is a doctoral mastery that can help them to approach how to deal with that challenge. To learn that if I go to the 100, go to the, the to the core of all my doctoral mastery references, to look for help to questions I have in my life, that really most often give them an answer they need because they're turning to the scriptures and this just becomes a tool. The app becomes really helpful with this. And so if you don't have a download the doctoral mastery app, this becomes a great tool. Um, Daily, Daily Dilemma was invented by a group of our teachers years ago in our area where um, what they did was they took the, the dilemma that kids were going through and the students would share with the teacher, you know, or they would turn in a piece of papers with things they were, were invited to do that was wrong or questions they were asked. Um, it, this could be very traditional type questions. Why can't you drink tea or coffee? Uh, why can't you date till you're 16? Why don't you go to R-rated movies? Or it could be something else. And you want to help them to understand how they would answer that dilemma by using doctoral mastery. Uh, the doctoral mastery passages become great tools to answer questions or for them daily dilemmas that they experience questions they have. And so what we'd invite the students to do as part of a devotional is to share with others the dilemmas they experience as the year goes on, and then look at the scriptures that they could use to answer that dilemma. And maybe the student already did, or maybe they're about to, and they're asking for help. But either way, it becomes a really great opportunity to discuss and use doctrinal Mastery's passages, which have 
key doctrinal principles to answer challenges. Uh, with the lesson today, though, I'm going to pick one, Doctrinal Mastery, and I'm going to teach that lesson um, and how it, how it helps them in their lives, how it helps me in my life. So I'm going to show them what a Doctrinal Mastery is. You'll find Doctrinal Mastery is embedded into the weeks throughout the year um, in the passages when you get to that scripture passage. I have a closing prayer. After your board testimony, shake their hands and kick them out the door. The reason why we're going to introduce this to them for Dr. Mastery, we want to introduce to them the, uh, a new form of devotional. Um, this devotional incorporates a welcome, which is typically the kickoff to your class starting. It's going to be a hymn. Again, music with the Tabernacle Choir is great. Um, primary hymns are good because it makes them get up and jump around sometimes to get them moving. Uh, doctoral mastery, you're going to introduce some, one student that's going to be assigned that day to um, help lead out a doctoral mastery. Personally, I like it when one doctoral mastery is the theme for the week. So you take one passage for the week and that's every student's that devotional is going to read that passage. The class is going to read it together, maybe in sync. Um, and then the one student's going to share what they like about that doctoral mastery, what stands out to them and how they could use it in their life or how they feel like it's relevant. So Monday's John, Tuesday's Sarah, Wednesday's Bill, and it's done the same way. Everyone reads it together, and then that student then shares why it's relevant to them and why it's important. It doesn't take but a minute, but it keeps that doctoral mastery at the focus of their mind. This is then the part of the devotional where we invite someone to have a daily dilemma, where they could take one of the challenges that students have, it would be the teachers collected these, or more likely, uh, what we would see is a scripture that stood out to them and why. This is really good when it goes throughout the year because they can use one that, they, hey, last week when we were studying this, I really liked this. This stood out to me. Or later in the day, I noticed this. And so this is where you can either do a daily dilemma, the student could, or their favorite scripture and why, or something stood out to them in their own personal or class studies. This only takes a couple minutes. And then, and then an opening prayer. And then this is would be a opportunity to have scripture feasting, which was piloted in our area a couple of years ago. Um, some teachers still use it, some don't. Scripture feasting is when after the prayer, um, you invite the students to take five minutes to read the scripture that you're going to be studying that day. It's their come follow me study for the day. And so hypothetically, if it's Alma 38, they sit there and read Alma 38 as a class. It takes about five minutes. And then afterwards, you ask them what stood out to you, and you might have a couple of questions that they looked for uh, when they were going through it. I would then do whatever Come Follow Me lesson you might have for that day. This could be a lesson that was in June or July, Come Follow Me, that is really awesome. And you thought, man, I need to hear this one. We need to go backward and, and do that one. This would be great to do that. The key here is introducing the devotional and the importance that devotional invites and primes the spirit in the individual it also explains why we want you to be there on time. If this is priming the class to have a spiritual experience, and it's priming the student to have a spiritual experience, if they come in late, they, they, they break that sink that it might be occurring. And so we ask them to get there um, on time. Bear testimony and a closing prayer, and then shake hands, get out the door. Day eight, we have uh, get students there on time, set the class up, big smile, shake hands. But now we're going to introduce our new devotional. Um, have the welcome him, doctoral mastery for the week, daily dilemma or favorite scripture and a prayer and then you're going to go into we're going to have a readiness activity which is going to be some faith-based activity this could be a trust fall this would be blindfolding a person to have them walk a maze this could be some type of faith-based activity you could come up with that would have have them rely on using faith to act on belief uh, then we're going to do a lesson that comes out of the book of mormon introduction materials back at the beginning of the year and in the five-day area, it's called Acquiring Spiritual Knowledge, Part 1. What this does, it focuses on the importance of having faith, of getting knowledge through acting on faith, is um, really a review of the Alma 32. So in my mind, I'm going to infuse Acquiring Spiritual Knowledge material in the lesson, in the manual, into Alma 32, and allow them to see this idea of nurturing the seed and making it grow in them and that ability for it to develop. Bear testimony of the ability to acquire knowledge and the importance of, of working on faith. Um, I do have some teachers that they do, a student does the I know at the end after you bear testimony. 
of your statement of truth, then whoever's giving the closing prayer does an I know. And it is, I know whatever they learned today in that class. I know that if I act in faith, God will help me get an answer. It could be whatever that student has. I've seen teachers do this. It is amazing. I do it now because I, I learned it from some teachers. It's a great opportunity to have a student share. It's just basic. I know. And they then give the closing prayer. Closing prayer, shake hands, give them out the door. Day nine, we're going to now kick off the same as we. this becomes a routine for the rest of the year. You're there early. Don't be there behind the students. You turn lights on, shake hands, big smile, ask them questions in your regular devotional now. And at this point, we're going to go back to the beginning of the, the manual, introduction page of the Book of Mormon. In these five days, there's an Acquiring Spiritual Knowledge Part 2. This is the importance of, of looking for relevant information at appropriate sources and making sure that if we look for information about our questions, that we go to the appropriate sites and resources and tools that would help us, and the importance of making sure these questions are relevant to our day. As we start to work on acquiring spiritual knowledge, how we go about doing that in a way that the Lord works. I'm only going to bear testimony, closing prayer. So day 10 is typically a Friday now, if you start on a Monday. We're going to do this regular kickoff like normal, but now we're going to start and, and we're going to discuss requirements for credit. And then we're going to talk about the rules. Um, the rules being that this needs to be a safe place where you can share, that you can share things that matter to you, that you can share things of, of spiritual natures and, and, and how important that is. We had a student one time that had a really cool experience with the spirit and they, and the teacher said, Hey, can you share that with the class tomorrow? And they said, absolutely not. I would never share that with them because that class was not a class that was designed like environment. So we want to help them see the need to be there for each other. Most often students say that FSY or youth conference or girls camp, that it was awesome being surrounded by people who believe what I believe. So we want to remind them that the importance of that in that class. So you're going to set up rules then, such as you don't mock somebody else. You're not going to argue with somebody about doctrine or principles. You're not going to uh, do anything that belittles somebody. You also might want to set up your simple rules, such as tardies are after the, the opening hymn ends, um, then the, then from there on you're tardy. Um, maybe you might do a rule of no no food and other than what we provide for a birthday breakfast or a, something like that. But don't don't swing by McDonald's and bring in the classroom food. And so you just set up rules you've been watching for the past nine days to see what rules might be needed for this kind of class, but more importantly, help them develop these rules. So they can own it. Uh, you'd also want to introduce class presidencies here. This is where a class president with either a doctoral mastery president and a, um, a devotional president with a secretary or a class president with a first and second counselor and a secretary. Um, you could even, if you got a small group, just do a class president, a devotional president, and then a secretary or a class president um, with a secretary depending on how big your class is. These are assignments. These are not callings. So you would want to visit with a bishop to clarify that they're available to, to help, but this does not require worthiness. So we've had students that were working through disciplinary issues in church, um, but the bishop says this would be a great time for this person to serve. Uh, it's just a service assignment. So a visit with the bishop about who they could use. This also should not be a quorum president or a class president. For young women, you're, you're looking to involve people who aren't being used in other areas, uh, so you don't have the same redundant people being used. Uh, class presidencies are involved because the class president who's going to welcome them every day, and typically this is going to be one of your, your leaders of a class. The doctoral mastery president, they're the ones, or, or first counselor, is the one who's going to assign which doctoral mastery we do each week and which person is going to work with, the, with that. They might also organize devotional. Um, and then your secretary is going to be the person who keeps track of attendance, keeps track of um, birthdays, so you can make sure we acknowledge them in class. Or maybe for kids who are, have maybe June birthdays, you want mid-year birthday or something like that, that they could celebrate with them halfway through the year. Um, this might be also someone who keeps track of some, maybe you've bought some uh, get well cards from Dollar General, for, and they make sure the class signs it, and we send it to somebody who's sick in the class, or we miss you to a student who's quit attending. The secretary could do a whole bunch. Then there's an activity of who's who. Uh, I've seen teachers do a Kahoot quiz with this. 
really cool where you take the questions that students asked and answered in the first 10 days with what their favorite this is, what their favorite ice cream or their favorite temple, their favorite scripture or the two truths and a, and a lie, maybe the the lie that shocked everybody or the truth that blew everybody's mind. But this would be a who's who about people in the classroom. Again, this is meant to develop unity as a group. And then uh, a lesson on, I would do maybe Alma 36. I chose that because it was one of our summer blocks. Um, you could trade that out for anything else, but I would look at a scripture block that had been taught in the summer that we didn't have. And I want to inter- you know, incorporate that into this day, bear testimony, closing prayer, shake hands out the door. So I'm going to say 11 here because this is from now on. So from the rest of the year, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do come to class, big smile, shake hands, devotional is going to be with Dr. Mastery, your hymn, your daily dilemma, your prayer. Um, and you're going to create your lesson based on the come follow me pacing. The come follow me pacing, we've been asked to not be a week ahead or a week behind, but the same week of the family. We we just invite you to trust the pacing that goes along with this. The lessons are outlined as part of the manual, and the manual is different from the individual and family lessons. And so if you use the Book of Mormon Seminary Manual, um, it will incorporate all the things that you need that will help with with their come follow me experience assisting their family along the way as well. Bear testimony, invite a student to have a closing prayer. You might incorporate the I know, shake hands, kick them out the door. This is awesome because it's the rest of the year. It's going to kind of be smooth that way, but there's always going to be change. It seems like right now the church incorporates lots of change all the time. We're going to be introducing some change coming up in January with a curriculum change again. And this curriculum change is going to inc- include uh, your four lessons a week are going to be come follow me based lessons. And then one lesson a week will be either a life skill, a mission prep or a temple prep experience. But when it comes to change, listen to Elder uh, Johnson and his reference about how we could respond and reply to change. Sometimes we assume that an inspired idea or policy can never be changed. Well, there are numerous examples of inspired ideas that are right for a certain time and place, but later are changed. The law of Moses was given by the Lord and was the right thing while it was in force. For years in this dispensation, there were regional representatives and assistants to the 12. These positions were important for that time period in the church, but the change from regional representatives and assistants to the 12, to the current use of the 70 was also inspired. Sometimes we feel that a change somehow casts a bad light on things that have gone before, but that isn't the case. When a new policy comes, I invite you to respond with a spirit of seeking to understand rather than to criticize. Decisions are made with the intent to bless our students, their families and priesthood leaders and you as well as helping those uh, who serve in SNI. Please ask questions when you don't understand a decision, but do so assuming good intent and with a desire to understand rather than to find something to murmur about. As we do this, we invite the Spirit to teach us. When something new comes along in our lives, we should try to be open and view the possibilities in a good light. So this kind of references the idea that we we need to be open and be in view possible change and with the intended light of positive intent, that the desire is to help the students deepen their conversion to Jesus Christ, to qualify themselves and others to um, have a, a wonderful temple experience and to assist our family and others to return back to my father. That's the intent of all programs. But the application of those programs are going to change based on the time and need of that group. So we want to be really careful when it comes to this stuff that we might look at and say, well, when I was in seminary, we did this. It was really awesome. It was really effective. That was great then. But our leaders have asked us to do some things today that are different and our focus is different because our youth are different and the world they live in is different. So because of that, change is going to be an, uh, an inevitable part of everything we do. We ask that you just work with that. I know if we'll just trust the Lord and rely on Him as we do things that are different, the Lord will help us to to work through that. 
a murmuring is never going to be a tool that helps us return back to our Holy Father. When we talk about one of the challenges with change would be that we're doing Come Follow Me plan. We're using our manual, but we're pacing with Come Follow Me. And as part of that, I may want to stay in a chapter longer because it means something more to me. I would still be in First Nephi if we were not using the pacing guide. I may skip certain chapters saying, I don't like these. These aren't beneficial to me. But instead, we want to stay with the pacing guide and then also remember mom every Monday. So Monday, my job is to keep on moving, move on Monday. So that allows me to move, to, to keep up and not get behind and find myself robbing the students of potential experience they could have in the scriptures with the spirit that are aligned with prophetic vision. So here's some things that just don't work, all right? This is some things we've found that just please don't do. Um, don't assign students to bear testimony. You can ask them to do the I know in the closing prayer because that's not a testimony meeting. And if a student doesn't want to say it, they simply can just have the closing prayer. But what we don't want is to create classes where we're going to sit around a circle and everyone's going to take turns going around bearing their testimony. Uh, please don't have kneeling prayers. There's places and times for kneeling prayers, and a seminary class is not the place for that. Also, please don't have prayer lists on the board. That creates an idea that we become projects for people when our names go up there. Now, you may ask the class, is there someone we need to pray for? Is there something going on that we need to be helpful? Do you have a test or something we want us to pray for you with? But that's different than having a list of names on the board of who we're praying for. Um, I would really strongly encourage that you have no food in class. Um, with the exception of you bringing in donuts or treats for a birthday, be careful of the no, no food in class. If a student is getting McDonald's and coming in the classroom, it's going to change the environment of your class. It's going to create a distraction or it might spill or whatever. Uh, be careful there. And then don't share sacred details of the gospel. There are simply things that we ought not discuss with the students. There's hobby topics that we maybe have done research on and we feel strong about, and we want to teach those. Um, maybe things about the temple that aren't on the church website uh, or parts that we should cover or even doctrines that aren't relevant. Um, and so be careful of, again, who we represent. The, the group of students today tend to be a little different than before, where they often will call you by your first name. Culturally, that's shifted a little bit, where that seems to be doable, and maybe we're fine with that. We want to be careful they don't think this is a casual environment, though. I recommend still brother or sister with your name um, as the, the use of that in this classroom. Um, this young boy or young girl may be in your home every day with your kids, but in that classroom, there's a formality we want to have that creates a, a need for a teacher-student relationship. And then dress the part. We're not going to tell you how to dress. Um, some of you have to wear a certain attire because you're going to head straight to work, and that's the only way you can get there. What we're asking, though, is that you represent the first presidency in your class and your teaching. Um, if we're casual in our dress and our attire, we may be casual in our attitude. And so please, you know, make sure you're dressed and ready to go when you walk through the door. Um, plastic or, or or paper becomes often a question we get for recycling. And we're being asked the same thing about uh, scriptures. Can I use a phone in the classroom? Phones have excellent tools on them. Uh, you can highlight a word in gospel library in the scriptures, touch it, and it brings up an option for you. And one of the options is define, and you can have them define that word. You can highlight and tag it to certain doctrinal topics, such as my doctrinal mastery. I want to tag every one of them in the Book of Mormon, DM space BM. So I'm going to do a doctrinal mastery Book of Mormon, doctrinal mastery New Testament, doctrinal mastery Doctrine and Covenants. And I want to tag all my doctrinal mastery that way so I can find them easy. Those are great tools. But that phone also can be used to play a game. A student might be bored and they start playing their game during class. But maybe one thing that might help is um, to ask the students to go in airplane mode because your phone still then has the gospel library downloaded um, or ask them to take ownership as a learner and recognize that please, you know, silence your notifications and then ask them not to play games. If you see them playing games, you can say, put the phone up. But listen to Elder Johnson as he talks about the difference between using phones in the classroom and uh, with scriptures and also paper scriptures. I've been thinking about uh, the use of scriptures in our classes. We don't have a policy about the use of electronic versions of scriptures. 
on phones or tablets. In our classes, uh, we leave that decision to the teachers or the faculties. There may be good reason for the decision one way or the other. For example, someone may decide it's too disruptive to have students use phones or tablets in class. This may be a fully justified decision, but it could be harmful to try to sell the decision by implying in some way that studying the scriptures with a physical book is the only true way to do it. The medium on which we find the word is less important than the impact of the word on our souls. Would we be better off if students were studying the scriptures from plates of gold or brass or parchment or papyrus? Each medium has its advantages and disadvantages. For example, it can be tough to mark and transport metal plates, but they sure last a long time and you never need to recharge them. The central issue is the word of God, not the medium on which it's found. What if some teacher has left the impression that one can't truly study and use the scriptures if they're in an electronic, electronic form? And then a student becomes a missionary and begins using a tablet for their scripture study and teaching. We wouldn't want them to think they could only experience a lower level of scripture study because they're using an electronic version. There may be also teachers in an attempt to utilize technology they find advantageous that send the message to students or colleagues that unless they're studying the scriptures in a digital format, they're not doing it correctly. As far as the effect of the word has on lives, one source for the scriptures is not inherently better than another. Each has advantages and disadvantages, but we shouldn't put the idea in a young mind that one medium is inferior for study to another. The advantage all have is that they made avail make available the sacred word and can help change lives. As we said several times, the medium on which we find the word is less important than the impact of the word on our souls. I just invite you to be careful when it comes to phones. We've seen teachers that create battles with students over their phones. Uh, you can lose the, the relationship with a student very quickly over that. Uh, you can just continue to invite students to make good choices. Be careful that we don't declare war against phones when uh, we can have some really awesome tools there, but then how we use them is the question. So as we wrap up right now, um, your first 10 days isn't an ordinance. You can adjust it however you want to create a Zion-like environment in your class while also making sure we help the student understand the role of the learner, the ability to acquire spiritual knowledge, the importance for respecting each other, the importance of uh, the requirements for credit, the value that comes to understanding who we are and why we're here. You can create your own mechanism that does that as long as we stare in the scriptures and continue to work with our purpose. And remember, our purpose is to help youth and young adults deepen their conversion to Jesus Christ and his restored gospel. Qualify for the blessings of the temple which is the next ordinance me and we're going to take besides the sacrament and prepare themselves or family and others to return back to our Father in heaven. I promise and bear testimony that Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost want this. They are eagerly working to help the youth do this. And as we attach ourselves to them in this calling, the Lord will endow us with power to have that success and to help these students love the Savior deeper restore gospel more, be excited for and prepared to enter the temple and help families and others have the gospel of Jesus Christ and return back to Father in heaven. I say these things in Jesus Christ. Amen.